It was the following afternoon, after I'd managed only a few hours of fitful sleep, that Dubois came to the door and requested that I follow her immediately. Is something wrong? I asked, afraid to meet the woman's eyes for fear of what I might see. Come, was the only thing she'd said. I rose then, from my place in bed, and dressed as quickly as possible, before making my way out the door, much to Asha's concern. I could only make her face out briefly as I turned to close the door behind me. In her eyes was fear, unlike anything I'd ever seen. It'll be all right, I mouthed, before closing the door. She didn't seem convinced. Rather than dwell on how my friend might be feeling, I shifted my focus to my own survival and began to follow Dubois down the hall, past the rooms where the soldiers and other members of the militia slept, and toward the skywalk that was explicitly off-limits to everyone. Where are we going? I asked. Building B, Dubois replied. I wanted to question her wanted desperately to find out why we were going to the prohibited section of the hospital and just what we would be doing there, but didn't, knowing that unnecessary questions were only likely to get me in more trouble. With that in mind, I continued forward, only pausing briefly to allow her to open the door before we stepped onto the skywalk. Though only a few feet separated Building A from B, those brief inches were enough to terrify me. We crossed them within moments. Our hair stirred, and then parted by the winds I undoubtedly knew were of change. Then we were in the shadow of Building B, and awaiting whatever fate was to become of me. Now, Dubois said, staring at the building for several long seconds before turning to face me. You're probably wondering why I've dragged you out to a forbidden section of the complex. I didn't reply. I simply waited. Tasha Stooges has recently made me aware of certain talents you seem to have, the commander said. Ones that might be beneficial in purging the city of its current coyote problem. I don't know what you're talking about, I said. Oh, but I think you do, Dubois replied. I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. What do you want from me? I want you to use your gifts to locate something for me, she replied, drawing a handgun and then passing it over by the barrel. A feral, one who's wandered into the building and made a home for itself. No, I said. No? Dubois asked. I shook my head. She lowered the gun to her side and sighed. <sighs> Anemia she said. Hannah, Anna, Anna, Mia. What makes you think that you are in any position to refuse me? I... She extended the gun again. This time, however, her face was devoid of emotion, her eyes cold and remote, like the surface of the moon. Her gaze was enough to make me falter, and as I reached out to take the gun from her, I thought for one brief moment, that she might turn the weapon around and shoot me. Such was the hate in her eyes. The moment the gun entered my hand was the moment I knew that I couldn't back down from this. What do you want me to do? I asked. I want you to enter this building, she said, drawing a key from the chain around her neck and inserting it into the lock. And kill the coyote. Mind you, I don't know where it is nor do I know what sort of state it's in. For all we know, it could be mad with hunger, and might find you before you it. This isn't funny, Dubois. No? The woman smiled. I didn't think so either. We could use this building, Anemia, for our civilians, for our soldiers. Think of what we could provide if each of our inhabitants had homes of their own. I didn't say anything. I merely looked down at the concrete separating us from the ten-foot drop below. Dubois opened the door then, and waited for me to enter. Go, she said. Now, and find the creature, and slay it. <laughs>